<laughs> I'm thinking of like propaganda and things. What? <laughs> it's fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I'm, I'm very strange. I'm you thinking know about this. I'm thinking about pop tarts. Howdy, y'all. We're back here with Wonder Lady, and we're talking about Seneca on anger, and we've now reached section 13. Yay! Be afraid. Be very afraid. Be afraid. So, Wonder Lady, do you want to tell me a little bit about your channel before we start? Uh, yeah. Um, I have a YouTube channel, and um, I might be changing my name, but other than that, uh... Same old, same old. Lots of questions and interviews, inquisitions, that type of thing. I love the inquisitions. You got any future plans for who's going to be in the hot seat? A couple of people, actually, but um, I like to re reveal that like the day of, just in case someone like is sick, has a cold, blah blah blah, or just disappears. <gasps> oh, because I've had people not show. Yeah, I've had that issue before, too. It's a bummer, but sometimes it's inevitable, you know? Uh-huh. Are you ready for more Seneca? Uh-huh. <laughs> I did have a question before we continue. Um, have you found this interesting so far, this uh, book, essay? Define interesting. <laughs> uh, it, 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 Useful? Or just... Useful, interesting, or The bad? interesting things about it, um, like, I, I find the explore, exploration of a, an emotion like this to be a little bit confined. Yeah. Because uh, I think it's more nuanced than this. Uh, but, I don't know, uh... Yes and no, but more yes than no. Yeah, I don't know if that makes any sense at all. So, so if you were to put it on your scale of in a percentage, what percentage would you say you find convincing or useful or whatever? To well, I think I I approve of exploring your emotions and exploring like what ticks you off and whether or not your emotional responses actually match the situation. Right. Like, that's important. Oh, yeah. But the yeah. rest of it, um, like, because the, the language and the usage is so archaic. Yeah. Um, well. Like, I think a person could easily make assumptions about what Seneca is actually trying to say. Yeah. So I'm I'm remaining skeptical with the language, but I don't know. I think it's too I know we've done a couple of these, but the jury is still out. <laughs> you know? That's fine. That's like it's not fine. boring, you know. Yeah. It's I, not awful. I think a lot of the, the gap between stoicism now and stoicism at that time. Because we're talking about around the time of Jesus, you know. Supposedly Jesus, right? I was going to say, I don't believe in him. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, we're talking about, uh, you know, the time of of Nero and Caligula and stuff like that, essentially. Well, actually. You know, the language isn't exactly uh, pristine, right? But, and there's a lot that you can garner from it that is uh, not... It's not so very well refined, and it also is reflective of its time. That can definitely be said. So I get where you're coming from. It's, right. it's not at all. I don't. I don't think it's at all an unfair critique Thank of you. the actual actual language. But in terms of the, I know you hate the p word. Yeah, I do. But in terms of a philosophy, do you find it? of any use to contemplate yeah that's where you lose me there's a disconnect because you don't like the p word yeah it might be because it might be a cognitive bias but like 
I don't know. For me, it's like contemplate. As I said, self-awareness is important to me. Knowing your emotions, knowing if you're reacting correctly is important. But to sit there and go, I'm going to think about anger and I'm going to make decisions about anger and I'm going to categorize anger when every person takes every situation different. Like, I can't tell you how many times someone has told me to calm down and I'm not mad. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I'm well, not even near, but they say calm down, and I'm like, I'm gonna. That always works. Oh, you know? <laughs> uh, a little advice for the audience don't tell people to calm down. It doesn't work. It's, <laughs> it's awful. But <laughs> beside the point, like, also, did, did he interview women? Did he interview anyone outside of his, his cultural norm? Like, how is he going about even getting the information? Out, outside of the cultural norm, yes. I don't know about women, because we're, we're talking around the time of Nero. Right, so, but, like, like there's philosophy. so many different cultures. Like, if if you go to a different culture and you're talking to them and it's like you could sit there and say oh well you're doing this or you're doing that yeah well the stoics actually were they held the belief of what they called cosmopolitanism which is essentially i'm a citizen of the world therefore i'm acceptant of the world so if you have a different culture or a different viewpoint that's kind of not within the stoics control they just kind of accept it and so I think in terms of what the Stoics are putting forth is how do you view things? It might be unique, yes, it might be different from one culture to the next, but essentially anger is something that we all must examine in our lives. It's something that we have as a commonality. Oh, I have no, no issue with that, but I do have issues with one size fits all. Which is another reason why I don't really like the P word. Well, it's not. Philosophy is anything but one size fits all. Especially if we it's have like coming, it's, a, it's uh, The generalizations sometimes seem like it. And I'm not saying I don't do that kind of argument. I do. I, I know. I'm, I'm irritating with this. And the audience is going to be like, bad faith. Bad. There's, just, there's a lot of philosophers with all different perspectives. There are female philosophers. There are black philosophers. There but we're talking about Seneca. We're not to... talking about them. Well, I thought right we were now. talking about philosophy. I'm more talking about Seneca's philosophy, not philosophy in general. Well, generally speaking, I mean, Seneca, for his time, had a very male-dominated philosophy. It was very much white male-dominated or male-dominated. Right. No matter where you were. But I don't think there's very much in his philosophy that excludes being useful for women or being. Um, I'm not saying it is, but it, I mean, if you're too. going to. Like, I don't know. What does he say? It's, it's kind of like a Immanuel Kant, you know, he was he was kind of an asshole, but it, he he brought something to philosophy that was important. And I value that. And that's kind of how philosophy is. You you find value in the words of someone that lived long ago or recently or today and contemplate things and discuss things that are interesting and useful and make the world better. Yeah, I'm thinking about that. So, I mean, when it comes to the philosophy being something that is i don't know uh too general I, don't, I think that's kind of unfair because philosophy is eclectic landscape there, there's no one right way to do philosophy in fact there are critiques by philosophers of philosophy mostly. are we talking about philosophy um, in general or seneca's philosophy I'm because depending on which philosophy you're talking about my opinion changes i'm talking about philosophy in general right so I need things more specific in order to have an opinion because if it's just philosophy in general, I'm just going to shrug and go, not enough information. 
because there are some philosophies. Well, there are some philosophies you don't like. Yeah. Right. Uh, the, or the like is... don't prefer. And there's others that I, I find are a waste of time. Do you find this one a waste of time? No, because it has to deal with emotions. Gotcha. Then again, I think it, it lays out a like a bullet point on how to get there, but doesn't necessarily actually get there. Like it could be. It's it's also we are just like modern have, more modern people in a different society, and also we're different genders. We're, so. uh, it applies to genders anyway. So, right, and we, like, and we have only reached like halfway through that essay. Right, I, so. and we're not even close to like actually getting to a conclusion. And maybe at the end, I'll have a different opinion. But you know me, I'm I'm just always like, mm, I don't know. Always, always contrarian. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> I love no, you though. That's fine. I <laughs> I love you too. I don't I don't want a bubble. No. Right, um, and you definitely don't want a chamber, mm -hmm. but, like, I don't know, maybe people who are listening, like, can, can um, talk, they're going to be like, what, you have someone on who doesn't like philosophy talking about philosophy? Wait, why not? Yeah, that's kind of the point. Like, mm -hmm. why not? And that's why I, I keep kind of bringing it up, because I keep hearing, that, well, philosophy just confines everything. And that, that really is not true uh, on, in any sense of the word. There are philosophies uh, now that are just phenomenal and diverse, and there's not any one philosophy that works completely. It, it's, it's kind of a jigsaw puzzle that you create yourself and you pick up along the way. I think it's really important to highlight that because like Seneca is like the basis of stoicism right in mm. a way like controlling your temper can you know like being appropriate with it not poisoning say, yourself with it i wouldn't say that he's the basis of uh, well no be, i'm i'm generalizing which i just complained about so i'm a hypocrite um but <laughs> language choices i would say you know people like Epictetus, in my opinion, is the number one Stoic. Uh, and I think that you'll find the writing style there to be also tedious, but also... Uh, I've read The Seven Pillars of Wisdom. Um, so the Enchiridion. The yeah. The Enchiridion really isn't all that bad. But, uh... Yeah. I would say that that's more of a reflection of if you're going to generalize stoicism, um, that or Marcus Aurelius' meditations as well. Right, but he, he also wasn't completely reasonable when it came to the Christians. Yes, you, yes. I mean, he was great with and the plague. It's he kind handled. of. One good Go thing about one good thing about stoicism is that they, they know that being a true stoic is not attainable. But it's something one strives towards. So that's another thing. We know that in Stoicism, they know that mistakes will be made. But right. you know, it's not within the person's control to change that because it's in the past. So all you can do is learn from it and uh, make more wise decisions in the future. So right. and that's, that's the basis of the philosophy. That's why it's not... As constraining as people often think. Uh, I'm not approaching it from that point. Well, I'm, I'm just saying this is like a common kind of, well, Stoics just want you to control your emotions. Well, I mean, they realize that you can't always control them. And it's, it's just important to be mindful of those. And to also be appreciative of the time that you have in life, because... Wasting time is, I think, our number one. If you want to have a sin, I think that would be the number one sin, uh, according to the Stoics, is wasting time. I think boredom is useful. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> so uh, we're on section. I'm th awful, aren't I? You poor thing, putting up no. with me. No, you're not awful. Uh, I do think we need to start reading because. Uh, you asked so, me a really hard question, though. Yeah. Well, I, and my opinions aren't always black and white, so. Right. We're on section 13. Moreover, qualities which we ought to possess become better and more desirable the more extensive they are. If justice is a good thing, no one will say that it would be better if any part were subtracted from it. If bravery is a good thing, no one would wish for it to be in any way curtailed. Consequently, the greater anger is, the better it is, for whoever objected to a good thing being increased. But it is not expedient that anger should be increased. Therefore, it is not expedient that it should exist at all, for that which grows bad by increase cannot be a good thing. Anger is useful, says our adversary, because it makes men more ready to fight. According to that mode of reasoning, then, drunkenness is also a good thing, for it makes men insolent and daring, and many use their weapons better when the worse for liquor. Nay, according to that reasoning, also, you may call frenzy and madness essential to strength, because madness often makes men stronger. Why does not fear, often by the rule of contraries, make men bolder? And does not the terror of death rouse up even errant cowards to join battle? Yet anger, drunkenness, fear, and the like are base and temporary excitements to action and can furnish no arms to virtue, which has no need of vices, although they may be at times of little assistance to sluggish and cowardly minds. No man becomes braver through anger, except one who without anger would not have been brave at all. Anger does not, therefore, come to assist courage, but to take its place. What are we to say to the argument that, if anger were a good thing, it would attach itself to all the best men? Yet the most irascible of creatures are infants, old men, and sick people. Every weakling is naturally prone to complaint. Those are... I really don't like... Uh, I have a cognitive bias against the word weakling. Yeah, uh, same, for, same for me. I, I don't really appreciate the language used, but I do uh, think that the point does come across of what he's trying to say in terms of, well, it's not the anger that made you brave. It was you were already brave and you just had anger there with it. It doesn't add anything. In fact, it can overcome your bravery. Well... It, I don't think they become braver through anger, which is what you just said, except I think it takes anger to ignite a few sometimes. Or if someone, it's like, I'm not going to use my bravery unless I'm pissed off. Some people are like that, like, yeah, I don't really care. Yeah, I'm not getting involved. Yeah, you, you know, there's no reason to fight about that. You make them mad, they'll use their bravery. I think that's it. Or maybe, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Well, what do you think of the comparison he makes to drunkenness? Because in terms of anger, he's already kind of laid out that anger is something that is not controllable. It doesn't have any generals. It can overcome your ability to better reason. Right. So, um... so would you consider this actually a weakness instead of an actual strength? I don't think I could go either way. I'm not really too happy about how he worded the raspable creatures that are infants, old men, and sick people. That's kind of... Uh, he's being but, he's being very judgmental because... He's kind, of being, a, he's kind of being a jerk, right? Um, well, he doesn't seem to have a high opinion of the disabled or yeah. the marginalized. Yeah, and... Uh, I suppose, like, when it comes to infants and things like that, they don't have any control over their, over anything, really. Um, right. Well, they, they when it, sit when it, in their own excrement, so. Yeah, so uh, basically you have, they do complain, right? Infants complain. Old men definitely complain. And I don't know how many sick people you've been around. I'm pretty sure you've been around a lot. Uh, uh -huh. They tend to be pretty um, intolerable in terms of all the complaining. So, I mean, he has a point with what he said. I just don't particularly like the way he said it. Um, 
Yeah, but not all all old people are that way. And if he's only dealing with his social s circle, that's hard to that's hard to to that's a hard baseline to use for a generalization, unless you're only worried about your own social circle. No, I'm but like sure that we drunkenness, can drunkenness is when you drink, your inhibitions go away. When you're yeah. when you're drunk. You might be more inclined to be daring. Like I can, I can jump into a swimming pool from the third story of my hotel. You think people that are enraged are more daring? No, I don't think they're daring. Um, but a drunk who's angry might use a weapon and someone who's only angry may not use a weapon. Mm. They might use their words. I've seen people who were stone cold sober anger, angry. Well, as hell. It depends on the personality type. Angry. That's why I don't like the, the generalizations. From, like, from my experience, this is something that does occur. You have people who are not, uh, who claim to be that their anger gives them strength, but at the same time, it just make they're just angry. I so, think it helps them focus um, rather than giving them strength. They're giving them bravery. Like if you're a coward at heart, it doesn't matter how angry you are. So, you know what I mean? Yeah, uh, that's kind of the thing. It has if you get angry and your person is brave, well, you could just. You don't even need the anger. You have the bravery, you know, because you'll right. have they'll have the courage to continue on and to do what you need to do. Well, and with some think, people, they need bravery just uh, to have a conversation, right? Yeah, huh, that's me. And 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 that's outside of anger. So if you get someone who is hesitant with conversation as it is, and then you add anger to it. <laughs> Instead of focusing them, you might even confuse them more, like because of the insecurity. So, the idea of bravery and anger—they're—they're they're not necessarily the same thing. But if you put the two together, it might be effective in, say, maybe like a war, but not effective when, say, it is individual to individual, especially how we all process and react and you know based on families and things like that like i i haven't met anyone who uses a weapon when angry i have that's scary that's that's been pretty much the norm from what like you know but then again um, i i have a relative who when he comes home he kicks the garbage cans cuz he's pissed you know, if work was bad, he'll kick the garbage cans. It's like, why do you do that? That's <laughs> anger will make people do the darndest things. And I think that's overall, generally speaking, what that's what Seneca is trying to say. Well, it also breaks down your inhibitions. It also causes you to do things that you would normally do. It causes things to escalate. Right. So, and I think that this kind of is, uh, it applies universally, right? I mean, because... Yeah, I don't know if it, if I could say it applies universally, universally, but I don't, I'm not saying it doesn't exist. I think maybe that's a good place to end and we'll just cover the one section. That's fine. Okay. Uh, I think we had a really good conversation and it was worth having. Right. I, yeah. I agree. Um, like, I'm interested to know whether or not he is... Like, I wish he was alive so I could ask him questions about um, who he's talking about. Um, I, I don't know. I tend to, when I, whenever I read the text, I try to... I guess separate the author and their life away from the message that they're trying that they're trying to portray, or at least what I'm gaining from reading the text. Because if I 
if I worry too much about that kind of thing, I'll miss what they're actually trying to portray, and I'll just put, like, kind of what my own bias is into it. Right. And, and I'll also include ideas about their own bias, and, you know, just over... I end up overanalyzing the text when I could just be reading the text and absorbing what it's saying and trying to see if it's even worth my time, I guess, to... <laughs> well, kind of I, think, I think literature in itself is definitely um worth it and i don't know if you would call this literature but i think i would for yeah. me the zeitgeist of a piece especially a piece as old as this i mean granted we're not reading it in the contemporary language but do you know the greek no yeah. sorry that that's a personal joke everyone um but the zeitgeist to me helps flavor Heck, so. Yeah, I don't want it flavored. I want it raw. I want to yeah. add my own flavor to it, you know, uh, not in a sense of, you know, confirmation bias kind of flavor, but just kind of how can I utilize this in my experience and well, there's nothing wrong time. with that. But for me, I do it kind of opposite. I'm going through the zeitgeist, or at least I can't help it. Not that I can really put myself into the position of an ancient Roman and yeah, understand uh, someone of his status I don't, and his lifestyle and his social circle and his worries and his cares and his loves. I I'll never get there. Yeah, it, it, it would seem like a, in, in some ways it's like I'd, I'd like to know generally about the person. You know? Right. But I, I don't... But I can pick up on the politics. Yeah. And but... I can um, kind of get an idea for the culture and figure out what's good and what's bad because some things in some cultures are not acceptable and other things are. But um, for someone who might be advising someone in a political position, I would say that this would be useful. Definitely. But I... I, I'm I'm seeing this more see of it. like not an individual to an individual, but an individual to a community for some reason. This, especially this past thing, it sounds more like how to inspire your troops using emotion and what to look for, and whether or not you should let them drink, and how to identify a bold person, like a naturally bold, brave person, to one who. You know, maybe you have a a legion that's not as brave. Maybe they're more financially, like, motivated or, like, I don't know. I don't know. I know nothing. That's all I know. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much all I know. Uh, I know that I know nothing, and that's fine. Oh, you sound I, so sad. I, I can find contentment in that. No, you but... don't know nothing. Come on. <laughs> Well, Come on! And in the scope of everything that there is to be known, I don't, you know. But um, uh, I, do you I think, think he's actually saying anger is useful, though? And he's saying it's not useful. He's saying that if you own these qualities of bravery and strength and things of that sort, then you own those authentically, and to add anger to it only makes it out of control. Yes. I think there's yeah. a difference between a leader being angry, though, and the troops being angry. And who they're yeah. directing their anger at. Yeah, the, there is a difference. A calculated difference, in fact. Yeah. I would definitely want my generals to have cooler heads than, say, the people in the front lines. But oh, at the yeah. same time, it, I would prefer that none of them were out of control angry i would prefer they weren't drunk in the front lines and making oh. decisions and uh oh if they're on the front line and it's like uh, sword and spear i want them as drunk as possible <laughs> oh my god i do i <gasps> do wait, wait, you know the okay. ragdoll effect if you fall you're <laughs> less inclined to injure yourself we have like <laughs> We have high tech, heavy, heavy machinery. I know. I'm just putting uh, myself uh, in a Roman legion here. I'm not doing the high. 
Oh. The high tech machinery. If you're oh, in a little would... Roman legion and you're in the front, I want you a little. I want you drunk. You know, I do. I wouldn't want that either. Line. They would be. They would at the time. They were using like spikes and mud and things like that. So and they would get into fights with what the Gauls and like marshes and shit. If you were stumbling around drunkardly through the woods, you wouldn't get much fighting done. <laughs> True, but when you, when they did that thing with the shields, where they were covering their yeah. their their friends and themselves, and then yeah. you had the spear formation, that would be like up, 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 down. It was like very coordinated and very like <laughs> precise and kind of scary. <laughs> can you imagine them trying to do that drunk? Yes, I pissed can. Off? Well, the first, the front die. line, the very front line, not the whole thing, just a very, like, U10 or U100, you're going to drink, everyone else is going to be sober, because you're going down. <laughs> oh, my God. No. I know. <laughs> it would take some fortification, I think. It, it would, oh, oh, no, no. <laughs> I'm terrible. I'm terrible. I'm not talking about running around after, like, <sighs> you know, people running away. I'm talking about like the Legion, right? Doing that formation. Oh. I forget what the formation is called. I know it. No, has I don't. A name. Uh, yeah, I don't remember what it is either. But I, I visualize it. it, but that doesn't yeah. help because we're doing audio. I think that this was a good chat, and yeah, I feel like I frustrated you more than anything. I'm so sorry. No, it's okay. We went off topic for a little bit, kind of, kind of. I, I asked you a question that ended up being a lot longer answer than I anticipated, but that's fine because... Well, I have to answer a question honestly, so it's hard. Yeah. No, I'd rather you be honest than just trying to please me, I guess. Yeah, that, <laughs> so, that'll never happen. <laughs> thank you all for joining. I hope you enjoyed this. Oh, and subscribe to Wonder Lady. Oh, thank you. And subscribe to Snarky. Yay! I hope you're subscribed. Click the bell, too. It, it works half the time. Well, thank you all for listening, and bye! Bye! <laughs>